and welcome back to this segment on our channel called Answering Your Most Google Medical Questions by Heidi Gastro and today's video is a super interesting one. So let's get started. So in today's video we will be exploring the question, what happens to your body during a panic attack? So according to the World Health Organization, an estimated 264 million adults around the globe suffer from anxiety. Of these adults, 174 million were female, making up 63%, and 105 million were male, making up 37%. Nearly half of these individuals, approximately 47% of the survey respondents, reported that they experience anxiety regularly, and 62% of these respondents reported at least one recorded panic attack in their lifetime. So a panic attack is a sudden episode of intense fear that triggers a series of severe physical reactions in the body when there is no real danger or apparent cause. A panic attack occurs when one suffers from at least four more of the following symptoms. Feeling like you're losing control or going crazy, a pounding heart, profuse sweating, body trembles or shaking, shortness of breath, experiencing chest pain, experiencing sudden nausea, experiencing sudden dizziness, experiencing sudden chills or hot flashes, experiencing an out-of-body sensation, feeling like you're choking, experiencing a sudden fear of death, and experiencing tingling or numb hands, arms, feet or legs. So the causes of panic attacks are not clearly understood, but research has shown that they may be genetically linked. They are also associated with significant transitions that occur in our life, such as leaving for college, getting married, being in a violent experience, or having your first child, which are all life transitions that may create stress and lead to the development of a panic attack. A panic attack can last for 20 to 30 minutes, hitting its peak at around the 10 minute mark. The majority of panic attacks are typically short, but repeated attacks can recur for hours. According to experts, if symptoms don't peak within the first 10 minutes, it's not typically considered a panic attack, which has a sudden onset of panic. Instead, it's rather considered a prolonged period of high anxiety. So during a panic attack, the brain orders the autonomic nervous system to activate the flight or fight response. The flight or fight response is an inbuilt survival mechanism that we as humans possess which has allowed our ancestors to run away from predators or stand and fight them with extra reserves of strength. The whole response relies largely on the release of a hormone called adrenaline, which your body also produces when you're excited or exercising vigorously. During a panic attack, the adrenaline levels in the body can spike by two and a half times greater than the normal levels. When this excess adrenaline floods our bloodstream, it triggers various physiological changes. Palpitations, feeling trembly and sick, a dry mouth, breathlessness, choking and chest pains are often accompanied by a feeling that you're dying or that you are going mad and are all caused by this extra adrenaline. During this adrenaline rush, we also end up breathing too fast, which lowers the carbon dioxide levels in our body, often making us lightheaded and causing pins and needles, which also does a great job at raising our anxiety even more. To get through a panic attack, the most important thing to do first is to take control of your breathing. During a panic attack, we begin hyperventilating, so stabilizing your breathing can quickly calm your body's flight or fight response. Find a place where you can sit or be comfortable, concentrate on making your breath slow and even, and try to inhale through your nose for 4 seconds, hold it in for 2 seconds, and then exhale through your mouth for 6 seconds. Some other quick coping strategies include finding an object to focus on, counting slowly from 1 to 100, practicing muscle relaxation, repeating a mantra, meditating, or doing some low effort exercise routines. So certain substances are also known to trigger anxiety and sometimes even panic attacks. So if you notice that your panic attacks occur around the same time you've consumed a stimulant such as coffee, alcohol, cigarettes or any recreational drug, it may be helpful to limit or avoid them and to see if your attack frequency changes. And 
finally, Treatment for Panic Attacks focuses on therapy that teaches the individual to change their thoughts and actions so that they can understand their attacks and manage their fear. Patients are advised to maintain a regular schedule, exercise on a regular basis, make sure they get enough sleep, and to avoid the use of stimulants such as caffeine and cigarettes. Medications can also be prescribed and include selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, or SSRIs, which are a class of antidepressants. Examples of this drug include fluoxetine, paroxetine, and sertraline. And that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And please make sure you turn on your bell notification so you'll be notified every time we have a new upload. If you would like to help us make better videos and content, you can also donate to us via PayPal. Take care and thanks for joining me today as I explored the basics of panic attacks.